Hey guys, this episode is brought to you by Sinusoid Pro Audio Couture. If you want to support the show and support guys who support the show, you should support Sinusoid. Absolutely. Uh, you know, we got connected up with Sinusoid, I want to say like a year and a half, two years ago, something like that. Sure. And we've just been in love ever since. It's been a whirlwind romance. We're, you know, picking engagement, you know, plans for our wedding and things like that. We're, uh, it's getting pretty serious is what I'm saying. Sinusoid.com. They make cables. And smiles, it's getting pretty serious.com. Hey, this is Ryan. And this is Steve, and you're listening to 60 Cycle Hum, the guitar buying, selling, trading, mining, fixing, breaking, reviewing, playing podcast. We're back! We did it. We're back from Nam. Uh, I know that most years we get a bunch of content at Nam. Yeah. But this year we kind of looked at each other and like, let's just hang out and party. Chill. Let's AF. be like like cool, chill guys at Nam and not just be sticking microphones in people's pl- faces and making a bunch of sloppy content that we regret later. I heard you finally got a good interview with Tim Marcus, though. I got a pretty good interview with Tim Marcus. On the floor of Nam on Thursday. I need to watch that video because I want to know what the Kelvin consciousness is. I don't know what he was talking about with that. It's some odd comment he made. Uh, Kelvin is a temperature thing, right? Yeah. Yeah. Maybe it wasn't in the video, but I think I commented off mic that the the pedal gets hot because I was talking about his the amp pedal. Oh, yeah. And uh, it runs at full. It's got a tube in it. And it runs at full voltage for a tube amp. Mm-hmm. And so the, the chassis of the pedal does actually get warm. So I might have mentioned that off camera or off uh-huh. mic or something, and he was remembering that. But uh, what do we? Uh, what else do we have to get into, Steve? What's new with you? Uh, what's new with me is hopefully by now I've shipped them all out, but we have sold our second run of Pelican Noise Works slash Z Cycle Hum 50-50 overdrive. Yeah, we sure did. It only took three days. Um, well, what, what happened is we opened up uh, or, orders to the inner circle. Yeah, inner, uh, yeah, I can't talk to the inner circle a week early, so they got to uh, sit there and order uh, their own fifty fifties without being under pressure to get them done real fast. And then everything that was left, I think there was about seventeen pedals left, went within three days on the normal Facebook group. Yeah, and uh, if you listen to the show, you, it's not like uh, we kept it a secret. It, we told you that we'd be selling them. In, la- in the last episode, so. But if you are a first time listener, welcome. Yeah, welcome. <laughs> Maybe if you stick around, you can hear about the next run of fifty fifties. I think the next run happen. The next run's going to have uh, new art on it. I don't know what that art's going to be yet, but I want to start doing special runs of art. I don't know. Uh, we did thirty pedals this time. The first time we did fifty. Uh, I'm all about like keeping these pedals kind of scarce we don't need to flood the market with them a uh, minimum run for printed cases is 20 so i might do small limited runs so here's what we do each time you've gone down by 20 so we did 50 and then 30 right so actually the next time we have to do 10 i'm not really sure how <laughs> and then we have to like then we have to do negative, negative 10. 10 how's that gonna work uh we buy 10 we, from the used market we buy 10 off of instead people of, instead who of, already have them instead of selling 5050s, we will buy them. This is gonna this is not gonna be able to work after a while. Soon there will be then, a demand that can't be met. Yeah, and then uh negative thirty, obviously. Oh god. The stop. I've more. already covered the joke. Negative fifty. Then Yes, yes, I know. Negative seventy, and then we're all out. No, then we have to go back to negative thirty. That's actually Oh, where, okay. So it's gonna it ping pong. Confusing. Yeah. So yeah. All right. So anyway. Um, yeah. So, <laughs> so we have in this plan, we have to buy them all back, sell them, and then buy them all back again. Yeah. No. It's like uh, sounds like a good plan. It's too. like a uh, uh, cash for clunkers program. <laughs> this is a terrible plan. Uh, anyways, if you don't know what the fifty fifty is, go look up our uh, YouTube video of it. It's basically a custom overdrive pedal we had made are we for the, the podcast. Are we the only fifty fifty demo on YouTube? Yeah, I think so. Uh, and it's basically two DoD two fifties in the same box with a little bit of tone shaping and a few other little details that are fun. So go check it out. Uh, it's just a fun thing that we do, and people like it. I'm just talking to our new listeners, Steve. You yeah. ever talk to our new listeners nope. like that? Like nope. fill them in on things? Nah. 
All right. Uh, this is where you ask me what's, what's new. What's what, 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 <laughs> what's new? What, what, what's new with you, Ryan? Are you trying to be Porky Pig? No, that's just <laughs> the way I talk now. <laughs> Steve's new thing to be awful on the podcast. <laughs> that's not new. <laughs> Anyone who listened to the last episode knows that's not new at all. <laughs> there was so, did you see the YouTube comment the other day? Somebody was like, I've listened to three of your episodes on YouTube. And your boy was was like falling off the mic in two of them. <laughs> yeah, you had a rough time last episode. But anyways, what's new with me? Uh, it's another thing that's uh, what's new with the show is like a month and a half ago, I announced we were doing a guitar modding contest. Yep. And I put the uh, the date to end it super far in the future so that I wouldn't have to deal with it for a while. Uh, it's it's now time that I have to deal with it. You should, have mod- it, you should have said it further in the future. Uh, like a year. Uh, but anyways, uh, the mod contest is over. Entries, you can't send them in anymore. And this week, I'm going to be spending a bunch of time getting everything organized. I think I want to get everything organized so that I put all the pictures and descriptions on like a single uh, eight and a half, eleven sheet, so that I can send it out to the judges, who I still have not selected. Are you can? There's a lot. Some people sent like a half a dozen pictures. I'm going to put the best on there. I'm going to. I'm going to I, you should just put them all on Imager and send people the link. Right, but I want to organize it. I want to have it organized somehow. So I'll. I need to figure out how I'm going to organize it. So I might have to put like numbers at the top of each thing. I'm gonna have to do work, Steve, to make this work. Okay, Dude, just put it on Imager. Put it on Imager as maybe as like a collection of like here's entry number one and it's a, it's its own Imager folder. No, I'm saying like just make mod contest the folder, and then just image dump everything into it, and then when people vote, they're gonna be like, oh, I like that yellow one with whatever, and then <sighs> then you just have to decipher it on the back end. No, the I That's going to be way I easier. I need to have it organized for me. So don't worry about this, Steve. I'm going to take care of it. You're the one who usually organizes all the numbers and stuff. Uh, I'm going to take care of this. All right, man. I'm telling you the easiest I, way. Because I want it to be a clean competition, you know. No no gouging of the eyes. Yeah. I'm, no I'm, kicks to the groin. No dipping your fists in glue and then broken glass. No like, blows this, to the face unless it's a crane kick. This is... <laughs> Yeah, that one's okay for some reason. <laughs> Wait, so what you're telling me is Cobra Kai was fighting dirty until Danielson whipped out his like his like kill move, and somehow the kill move was okay. Yeah, he basically like broke that kid's neck, right? That kid's I, dead I think now? that's how it worked. That kid's dead. He basically did the five finger death punch on this dude, <laughs> and everyone's like, "Yay, he's the hero of the movie, so we like him." Like, a kid is kind of. I mean, they call him the Karate Kid, but he should really be the the, the Dick Kid. <laughs> Just a big old Dick. Have you ever watched that thing, the whole thing about how like if you read it, if you watch that movie from like another perspective, he's just like the he's the just worst like the person, worst kid. He like raids into like some old dude's house and is like train me, train me how to do stuff. And he's like, ah, oh, kid, get out of here. No, really, teach me. Fine. Like, imagine if some kid did that to you, like. <laughs> Teach me how to do your job. Teach me how to be like you. And you said, go away. I super don't have time for this. And they were persistent. You'd be like, this kid sucks. <laughs> <laughs> like they'd come to the door and you would like not answer it. <laughs> I actually don't remember how that movie went down. That whole interaction between uh, Karate that's Kid. With, and That's the one with Eye of the Tiger, right? Yeah. But anyways, uh, so yeah, the mod contest. I need to get everything figured out. I'm hoping to have everything done by the end of February and have prizes figured out and judges figured out and make a big deal out of it Woo! and do something on either the Facebook group or the podcast or YouTube or all three together. Who knows? All three at once. Cause what? we've been getting some really cool stuff sent to us. Like we could live stream people to the some... Facebook group while we're li- we could live stream to Facebook and live stream to YouTube at the same time. Oh God, it's going to set my router on fire. <laughs> <laughs> Should we get into the first uh, ad and then we'll talk shop about Nam? Yeah, this first ad was sent to us by Ad Zant, Michael Van Zant. Uh, this is a Fender suitcase amp in a city somewhere. Um, it says, "Have a Fender Frontman 25R amp housed in an old suitcase. Looks and sounds good. Resonator cone alone costs forty nine eighty five. Resonator cone? Yeah. Uh." 
By cone, you mean like a speaker, right? And he's calling a speaker a resonator cone? No, I mean like a res like a resonator guitar, like the metal cone. Oh, like a dobro. Yeah. Yeah, that belongs on an amp. Yeah. Uh, that's uh, <laughs> that's how you get that chrome tone. <laughs> that chrome tone. Except this one's gold. <laughs> uh, may consider trades. Two hundred dollars cash in hand. Lone Star State of the Art Deco. That's actually like a really clever phrase. Yeah, but it's not really Art Deco, is it? We had this conversation about it's something not ex- else a while It's ago. not exactly Art Deco, um, but I like that turn of the phrase. It's a good turn of phrase. If only it because, was actually Art because Deco. Because it's like three different... Like and you can't a, really call it state of the art if there's a Fender Frontman 25R right, right. in it. Uh, it says, prices firm have cents... Have since changed the Z asterisk 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 P letters. That means to ZZ. S- there's an asterisk V in the picture. It says ZZ top in like the uh, the sticky letters that you'd put on your mailbox. Yeah. Uh, apparently, he changed it to say SRV. Yeah. I don't know why you would change it. Like if you take it off, just leave. Because everything SRV off. is the grace of all Texas bluesmen. Thanks. Um, and he definitely used a Fender. Frontman 25R. Is ZZ Top with a resonator on it? Is ZZ Top from? Oh, they're also from Texas. So yeah, yeah, it's all thematic. Um, it has like a little sheriff's badge on it. Yeah, Texas Rangers badge. I don't know. I mean, that's what this should say. Instead of SRV, it should say Walker at the top. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I or still, Chuck. I still like. I can't work past Lone Star State of the Art Deco. Okay, I'm. Let's talk about the concept of this. I'm down for a good old-fashioned suitcase amp. I think that's a cool yeah. concept. Yeah. The resonator thing, I'm going to have to hear this in person for you to sell me on it. I- right. It's just there to make it shiny, but I, that's a lot of metal to put on top of a crone, uh, uh, p- put in front of a speaker cone, and it's not like that hubcap thing that Visual Sound was doing a where few years ago. Where it diffuses the sound. Yeah, where it was designed to do a specific thing. Like, this is like it's designed like to be like an echo chamber. It's literally like putting... A a pot lid, like a frying pot lid, right over your speaker, and yeah, there's holes in it, but barely. There are barely holes in this resonator. When I first saw it, actually, like I didn't realize it was a resonator uh, cone. I thought it was just like a colander. I mean, yeah, it kind of has that look. But you put a speaker into a suitcase, and it's already going to have kind of like a funky tone. It's going to sound kind of lo-fi. It's going to rattle. Like things are going to be weird, but maybe that's what you're going for. Then you completely cover the speaker with a piece of metal. I'm really curious to know what this sounds like. I don't think it's going to sound good, but maybe it's it It sounds... Well, here's the best case scenario. That it sounds like a three-inch plastic Dan Electro speaker. Mm-hmm. Like that's what I'm imagining. It's just kind of muffled and muddy and bright when it... When you don't want it to be so bright, but you can't like get rid of the brightness, right? And too dark in other ways, which like, would be cool. Like just all over the map. Yeah, I, I bet it would sound really cool for like a harmonica. But amp, you that's know? not like not two hundred dollars cool. It's not like ah oh, man, yeah, definitely not two hundred dollars cool. And you're starting with an amp that, I mean, I say that there's no such thing as good tone and bad tone, just appropriate and inappropriate. But you're starting with an amp that is uh, not really famous for sounding good, right? They're they're uh, I mean they're okay. At they're functional amp. Whatever, they are fun- but- they're functional workhorses. Like you need to plug into something and be loud. The front man will make you loud. Yeah, basically you took a fifty dollar resin air cone, paired it with like a seventy five dollar amp, and now you're asking two hundred dollars for it because you don't want to write the labor off, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. I just love that he brags about the cost of the resonator cone. It's like, dude, this is your weird thing. Yeah. Like, no one asked for this. No one (laughs) asked you to do this. (laughs) No one is like, oh, wow, what a bargain. There's a resonator cone because I can just throw that into anything if I part this out. If you buy a Dobro, it's already got one in it. I doubt that this thing is an upgrade, too. Just, just uh, slip it over the strings of your uh, acoustic guitar. Yeah, just like throw a it into regular. Your, yeah. Convert your, uh, com- convert your Martin Dreadnought into a resonator. I mean, people do that. People do Dobro conversions on various guitars. Those people Those are called pe- sociopaths. They are sociopaths, but they s- 
they don't go like, oh, you know what I'll do is I'll go pay two hundred dollars so I can scrap one out of a suitcase that has a, a Fender Solid State practice amp in it, and that'll save me some money. <laughs> the, the dollar value of the uh, of the resonator cone is just it's Irrelevant. meaningless. It's completely meaningless. <laughs> this is like I get having projects. I totally get the mentality behind behind building this. Mm-hmm. When you sell it though, like two hundred bucks, man, you're not getting your money back. Don't even try. You're not getting your money or your labor time back unless you can prove that this like has like a sound people want. Or unless that resonator cone's actually made out of like solid gold. Oh, because there's a lot of solid gold resonator cones. I don't know floating around because <laughs> gold is such an acoustic metal. <laughs> have you ever played a gold guitar, Ryan? I have. You know what? That's a good point. I've also never seen Australia. Who <laughs> probably doesn't exist. How do you even know <laughs> what time it is in Japan? I know, right? All right, let's uh, let's talk about Nam. Yeah, yeah. Nam was uh, Nam was cool. You went up Thursday. Did a bunch of did a bunch of filming. I tried to do all the work that I wanted to do at Nam on Thursday. Right. Uh, I used Inner Circle funds. Thanks, Inner Circle to pay a cameraman to follow me around and get uh, like good, good demos that will help grow our channel and help grow things mm-hmm. and like, and show people things that were new in an interesting way. Uh, so I spent about two hours at the Fender booth cause they had probably the most new stuff of any brand. In, this she- year. in terms of sheer volume. Sure. I can count of new products. Right. I think like, right. Everything they had in there was new stuff. They didn't put old stuff out. Like, they didn't have any of last year's offsets out. And I asked a guy there, like, are you still going to do the the offsets? And he's like, oh, yeah. I was like, they're really successful? He's like, yeah, they're doing great. Hmm. So uh, they're still running all their old stuff, but they dedicated the booth to their new stuff, which was interesting. And so I got, I think, like, 14 videos at I thought you said 16. No, that was, I published 16. You published 16. That day. Not that day, but like I spent all day. The next day. I spent all day Thursday shooting, and then we went out for dinner uh, with the Guitar Nerds, which was a bunch of fun. Also, uh, Blake Weiland from Tone Mob, and uh, Ryan, I forget his last name, from Yellow Cake Pedals. Oh, Ryan Ryan McKay. Yeah. And then next day, okay, I'm getting ahead of myself. So then that night, after drinking all night until 1230, uh, Adam and my my uh, my videographer we we drove home and then I woke up Friday morning and edited as many videos as I could, which turned out to be sixteen videos before Steve came and picked me up. Yep. And then we went back up to Nam and then Friday went, night and then went to a, a, another after party. We went to the uh, uh, Gabriel Tenorio Custom Strings uh, Taco Party that he does every year, which was just a hoot. Yeah, that was a that was a long day. That was a really long day. Uh, we didn't. We got back to our uh, a lot of driving. Yeah, uh, yeah. I was actually thinking about that um, Sunday afternoon because I had to get gas again when I got back to San Diego. I got gas Friday morning. Uh huh. Now I had to get gas again on Sunday, and I realized that basically Friday and Saturday, I think I drove two hundred and ninety miles. Oof. Which I mean, like if you're on, like road tripping is not a lot, yeah. but just to be like. To drive, you know, 290 miles just to be in the same place, basically, my house. Yeah. Uh, that was kind of kind of crazy, kinda I cookie. guess. Um, do you think we should do that plan next year? Like where, uh, I shoot, where I shoot video and then come back and then we go back? I, I think, I think, I mean, it saved, like, I guess it saved, like, one night of Hotel. hoteling. Um I think, but we could have stayed with the sinusoid boys. Yeah, and we didn't this year, which was kind of foolish. But. I think if we want to skip Sunday next year, that's fine. But I've, we should have stayed. Oh, I was down with skipping Sunday. Like I got home Saturday night. What we got home at like three o'clock in the morning. Yeah, I woke up Sunday morning and I was just like, I'm so glad I'm not at Nam today, dude. <laughs> I just I, relaxed uh... with my family and had like. Had an actual weekend day, which you need after Nam. Yeah, I woke up um, Saturday or Sunday at like ten or eleven, I think. Uh-huh. And I usually don't sleep past like eight, um, but I was just like dying. I thought like I, I still hadn't, I didn't get my voice back until like Tuesday. 
Uh, I was oh, yeah. super congested like Sunday, Monday. We spend all of NAM just shouting at people because it's so loud. Yeah. And like, even if like you're completely healthy, your voice is gone at the end. Yeah. So, I mean, uh, I guess we can, we can talk about that. Like we well, were talking well, about like the, we talked about a lot about driving. Yeah. What, what, what Very I interesting like, stuff. What's, what's like some of your favorite people moments of Nam? Like hanging out with people, meeting people. Um, like, well, one, like going to that, people going, do dumb to, stuff. going to the taco party this year. That was my first time. It's oh like, yeah. Cause you always taco party it. four, but this is the first year I actually got to make it for yeah. that. Yeah. Um, and then, so that was super cool. And, uh, I, we got to see like a lot of guys, uh, that was kind of like, we, we ran into, cause we got up there early enough to hit the floor for like two hours, the yeah. floor on Friday for two hours. Which is and we ran into, uh, we ran into Cole mm-hmm. from the gear slum there. Yeah. But then at the party, we ran into like the rest of the gear slum guys, uh, I got to meet Clifton Worley from the Clifton Worley show. We met up with um You hadn't met Clifton before? No, because oh, yeah, you met him I at met, Summer Nam. Yeah. I you know, I spent so much time hanging out with him, I assumed that you'd met him too. That's um, funny. Got uh I'm trying to remember Co was there. Uh yeah. From uh one day, uh one day road show. Um was Equits at the toggle party? I'm totally blanking I on who was there. I think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like he was. There were a lot of wasn't, people. Wasn't there. Equitz his wife uh, photographing? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, they were. Um, and then um, I got to drink uh, Mad Lab coffee there, which Mad Lab uh-huh. is was like is friggin' fantastic coffee. Uh, I believe that's the stuff Sinusoid has in all their cable packs. Mm. Um, but it was really good. I need to just start ordering that stuff for myself once I run out of the stuff that I'm currently drinking that I get for free from my church. But it's really fancy. But anyway. Um, so at that taco party, I drank about half a bottle of scotch that Co brought. <laughs> I drank the other half. <laughs> and then, well, then I drank a bunch of beers on top of it, too. Actually, the, the best part of that was there was maybe like three, legitimately like th- probably three shots in there. Uh-huh. And I just figured like you're going to hit it like there, uh, like you were going to, Co was like holding it up. He's like, who wants who wants the rest of this? And I was like, that's a lot. I was like, Ryan, you drink like half, I'll drink the rest. And then you just drank the whole thing. Yeah. And you're like, you're driving me home. <laughs> I was like, all right, dude, whatever. It was my night. Yeah. I knew I was going to crash in the hotel and, and be fine and then just enjoy Nam the next day. But that was good scotch. I need to get more of that. Uh, but yeah, I got pretty tipsy. As far as things go, and I ended up uh, grabbing uh, Joel Corte, who was having a good time, too, and, you know, professing my love to him and just (laughs) telling him. I saw you guys talking for a while. (laughs) Telling him that uh, if I was a woman, I would let him marry me. Oh, my gosh. And that, uh, you know, he's the type of guy that I would let date my sister and things like that. (laughs) All right. So. (laughs) And then. And then I started telling him, like, next time you want a demo, it's, a, it's, a, it's on me. It's a freebie and stuff like that, which I'll stand by. I don't know if he remembers it at all. But, but I remember it. <laughs> now he's definitely going to remember it. Exactly. Now he has to do it. Um, um, so so the next day, we hit the floor. And, I, you know, t- finally going to get to the main event, the uh, sponsor of episode 206. Branton Rao, 2018. Oh my gosh! The yeah, war, so, the war so, that was, that war that is, the someone, war that was. Someone s- sent us sponsorship money to make this thing happen. Um. So, all I know is like it's approaching noon. We knew this was how much go of down. this do you even remember, Steve? All of it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you don't. You mean you weren't blackout drunk? Uh, just brown out. <laughs> I, I made sure to I made sure to take lots of pictures so I could remind myself out. It was kind of like memento. Oh my gosh, Steve um, has all these tattoos and <laughs> pictures of him drinking with so, Joe Brand. So um, we figured this is all going to go down at the uh, at uh, the sinusoid gear slum. At the sinusoid gear liquid slum liquid lunch party. Liquid lunch, yeah. The the they didn't call that beers and gears. I call it liquid lunch because that's like the best name for it. I don't know why um, they so, didn't go with that. So I'm walking the the bottom floor of Nam. I forgot what booth I was coming from, um, but I had been talking to somebody, and I'm on my way. And I, you know, I'm trying to get myself psyched up. I'm trying to I'm trying to get myself like pumped. So of course, running through my head is "You're the best around" from the Karate Kid. <laughs> and you're the best around. Nothing and so I'm walking, get you down. and uh, I see like I'm walking by, and I see like. Uh, Joe Branton and Matt Knight, or not Matt Knight, uh, Mark Packham on the floor. Uh-huh. And they're just yelling at me. They're like, hey, there's that guy, Joe, you're going to kill him. You're going to tear that kid apart. <laughs> like, NAM security is like I'm looking just like, over at you guys. Like, I'm What's just about like side eyeing 
they're like, we're waiting on Matt, and then we're coming for you. And I was like, I was like, all right. They're, they're, that's a uh, pretty aggressive. Like, yeah, yeah, I didn't really picture them being that aggressive. I think like, they're mad. Were, were I think they, they're still mad about the revolution? Were they still? Were they? Were they in like like European? football mode in air quotes like they, well they were wearing they were all wearing track suits they all had like rugby shirts on no, they were yeah they were wearing well they were wearing um they were all wearing manchester united jerseys and they all had like old-timey like handlebar mustaches yeah. it was really crazy uh so we get up there and like the <laughs> drinks just start uh it's rum and rum and cokes whiskey cokes well there's pepsi what pepsi, Pe- uh, pepsi the first whiskeys. one was pepsi whiskey they, yeah. they did have coke later did they have coke? Yeah. Damn, they and, saved uh, the good stuff for so later. So we're just going. They're just we're just going. And then like all of a sudden I just hear hear friggin' pack him. Sweep the leg, Joe, sweep the leg. <laughs> and Matt Knight, put him in a body bag. <laughs> but I'm going, like I'm focused. Right, I'm, right. I'm in. I'm in. And then the next thing I know is I'm me and Joe are laid on the ground next to the first aid table with a bunch of drinks on the ground. Oh my gosh. So uh I think this year we're calling it a double knockout. Well, I'll say this. Uh, you guys you guys went toe-to-toe. You went drink-to-drink at the liquid lunch. We definitely didn't go eye-to-eye because I think I have like okay, six or seven Okay, we inches. get it, Steve. You're tall. You're taller than, than most of the, uh, the, the guitar nerds. Jay Cross, he's, he's a tall yeah, boy. Yeah, yeah. I was surprised. Um, but uh, I think Joe, I'm going to say this. I think Joe won the spirit of the drinking competition in like his full day, like application of just drinking all day. Cause we ended up at the same after party yeah. that night. The uh, pedal pedal builders. Summit. I, I is he didn't drink an impressive amount of alcohol there in my opinion, but I have n- not seen anyone in a long time persist and keep drinking while being so obviously visibly intoxicated like the fact that he continued drinking past the point where he was i was like he's won whatever contest there is yeah yeah he just kept it going all day yeah after the drinking contest i was like i know i'm gonna drink again tonight so like i just like tried to recenter Uh uh-huh and then uh and then yeah we get there and we were hanging out a while and like we were there for probably like four or five hours yeah, and so I probably spent like a, two hours drinking, and then like the other three hours, like because we had to drive back, so I'm trying to like clear yeah, you out pace yourself. And Joe's just still going. <laughs> He's just lean, leaning on anything that was upright. So like, we could, you could make an argument that like, I think, I think if if Joe and I sat down at a table and did shot for shot, I would maintain more soberness throughout per drink. But Joe would hit the spot where most people would say, I'm out, I'm done drinking. And he would be able to persist past that. I'm talking about level of intoxication right. where I, if I hit the level of intoxication that Joe was in before he had three more drinks at that party, mm-hmm. that would be me like, Oh, I'm done. I can't drink anymore. But he persisted, and I have no. After we left, we don't know if he kept drinking. Like, yeah, I think his. It doesn't matter like fluid ounces. It doesn't matter how many drinks you have, because uh, that can come down to like body size and chemistry and what you've been eating and stuff like that. I think Joe's ability to persist well into the full depths of un- intoxication exceeds you and I. Yeah, that's fair. It was very interesting. <laughs> His eyes were rolling around in his head like I've never <laughs> seen before. <laughs> it was pretty incredible. Uh, other people in Am, should, should we talk about people that we got to meet, like run into? Like, yeah. Uh, we, well, so I think um, one of the highlights for me of just people was hitting up the Nanolog booth. Mm, yeah, um, yeah, that was cool. Uh, I, you know, you ran into is it is it his name's Adam? Yes. I think uh, on an airplane. Yeah. Um, but finally getting to like see him and, and try out those pedals, um, that was super cool. I've got two of the uh, the wave functions in. One is going to get contested out. We just don't know what that contest is going to be yet. And the other one, I'm going to get to demo and yep. you know keep do my thing with it. But I've been playing around with it and I really like it. It's a ton of fun. The uh, the the Nano Two setting on it. Is pretty incredible. Yeah, I, I really like it. Uh, just my my thing with because that was the pe- first one that I tried at their booth, and like it's really crazy because like you know you always have 
typically, you know, you have different pedals where um, this is getting more into the gear name, not the people. Yeah, name. yeah, I know. Save okay, this for the gear. We'll save this for the gear. We'll save this. Maybe I don't know. let's just okay. like mention people that we met. Like uh, um, we got to meet uh, the internet's Mary Spender. Oh yeah, the internet's Mary Spender. We got to uh, dude. We hung out with uh, Phil McKnight. Oh Phil man, McKnight that, from Phil is like, know your gear for like two hours. I've seen a bunch of his videos. And I've been always been like, oh, this guy's kind of kind of fun, kind of crazy. It kind of has his own thing going on. He's the exact same person yeah. when you're talking to him in conversation. Like, there's no act there. There's no like putting it on for the camera. That's who he is. And he was he was so gracious with us and so nice and like basically was sharing tips of the trade yeah. for YouTubing with me because he's like, I think he's got like 15 times more subscribers than I do, and he's uh, been at this a lot longer than me. So yeah, we ran into. Um uh, Henning Polly a, a few times. Oh yeah, Henning was around. That guy's a a nut. He's a ton of fun. Um, because so I, what what we ended up what actually happened is uh because we ran into the guitar nerds guys at lu- at lunch. They were uh, like, oh, you got to come by the GitCon. There was like a GitCon meetup. He's yeah, like, you guys, you guys just need to come by. Apparently, they did that every day of Nam. They had the GitCon reunion. Yeah, at five thirty at the the Framus Framus. Framus? Framus? At the Framus booth? Warwick. Let's just go with Warwick. Warwick? <laughs> you think, I, you think it, I can't screw up Warwick? I can screw up Warwick if I want, Steve. All right. I'm not going to do it right now. But but yeah, that was a bunch of fun. Uh, we They basically snuck us behind the velvet rope, and there was a bunch of food out, and Steve and I were both eyeing it like, do we crash this party and eat the food? <laughs> but we, yeah. We both... I was so hungry. <laughs> yeah. We both uh, refrained and were good boys. But that was cool. That was a, a cool yeah. event. There's, everyone was there. Like, uh, uh, who's that, like, epic guitar guy? Like, he does, like, the epic videos. I forget. I don't name. know. Shoot. I don't... Whatever. I don't. Uh, the, the guy with the, the SMG studio yeah. channel was there. Spectre. Whatever. Spectre, Spectre Sound. Spectre Sound. Um uh gear man dude was there gear man, I, I think i'm he was i'm so bummed that i didn't talk to him i actually looked at him like a bunch because he was wearing a cool shirt so i kept looking yeah. at his shirt and then he posted a picture of himself at nam i was like shoot i was standing right next to you and i didn't even know it was you yeah yeah oh i got to meet um uh uh rabia still don't oh, yeah. say his name Re- uh i think, think that's right is it rabia or rabia i think it's rabia that's uh, right. Yeah, you saw him on Thursday, I think. Uh, no, no. I Well, I saw him around, but I got to talk to him on Saturday because oh, okay. he was at the Chapman Guitars booth. And I was just like, hey, I liked your uh, your Fathom demo. And he's like, hey, I liked yours. I was like, you've seen my Fathom demo? And oh, my gosh. I, that happened to me a couple of times. Oh, I, at the uh, at the bowling party, I got to meet Andy, Pro Guitar Shop Andy. Oh, that's right. Yeah, Andy was there, Andy Marin. Um yeah, that was <laughs> yeah, that was a trip, and I was fully intoxicated for that. We no, yeah, like a, so that, so we sound like a bunch of drunkards, but it's like, well, at that point, like I was, fo- it was the right time to do this. I stuff. was focused on, you know, like I said, like I was focused on like getting square because I knew I had to drive. Yeah, and, and I knew like I whatever didn't. you wanted to do, whatever. So, um, so all all I know is like I couldn't find you for like 20, 30 minutes. Okay, well, like, this is what happened. Winding down. And so I go in and like you're just sitting down. I'm like, oh, Ryan's sitting down, like talking to somebody. Or you, and then like, so I left, and then I came back like ten minutes later. And you're sitting in the same spot, and I look over, and there's Brian Wampler uh-huh. and some dude. I'm like, who's that guy? I'm like, oh crap, it's Andy. So yeah. then I come over and sit down. I'm like, I want to know what's going on. That's basically my story. Is I was walking around, seeing who I could talk to, like because I'd been like sticking it to sticking with the guitar nerds boys for a while. Yeah, and whoever else was around, like you know the gear slum and stuff. Who cares about those guys? Whatever. You know, <laughs> do. No, I love those guys. But anyways, obviously we love them. We talk about them all, nonstop. But anyways, I walk back into the room where like the pizza and the cake was. Right. Like the party room at this bowling alley, and there, like. In the back table, in the back of the room, Wampler and Andy are setting up a camera and sitting down and starting to talk. I was like, I don't know what's going on, but I want to be near it yeah, and hear every word of it because this looks fantastic. So I went and just like sat down and like put my, my chin on my hand, you know, <laughs> like propped myself up and just sat there and like listened intently while they had a, a really cool conversation. I, basically, Brian was interviewing Andy. I'm sure this is already up or going to be up soon. No, I think it is. Um, 
I need to go check it out because at some point in the middle of the interview, they start talking to me like Andy, like starts, they were talking about the fathom and he's like, Oh, by the way, I really liked Aunt Ryan's demo over here. And they started talking about me wearing like the scuba suit and stuff. Oh gosh. And then Brian flips the camera around on me and they're talking to me. And I was like, this is not what I intended. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to be, you know, fly on the wall. Yeah. And then when they turned it back around and finished their interview when they were done, I was like, guys, I didn't mean to like interrupt your thing. I was just like, I've got to hear you guys talk. Right. And it was worth it. It was a lot of fun to hear them in person talking to each other. And just like, I'm a big fan of Andy. And uh, in my intoxicated state, I might have gushed to him in an embarrassing way as yeah. I was saying goodbye to him. But no, I think you did. Yeah. I definitely think you did. <laughs> um, I'm it trying to think of like, pretty I embarrassing. Mean, you know, we saw a lot of the people that we see at these things every year that we always like love to see again. Oh, uh, yeah. You know, guys like uh, Fuzz Rocious Ryan. Oh, yeah. I love uh, Ryan. Josh Scott. Ryan was you know, Colt from Walrus, like those kind oh, of yeah. guys. Ryan was telling me that Noodles from The Offspring spent a bunch of time in his booth. Oh, yeah. And he was just nerding out over that. Uh, oh, yeah. This, Colt was great to hang out with. He was in party mode Saturday night and, and yeah. we talked for a while. I got to talk to. The marketing director for Orange Amps for a while. Oh yeah, and yeah. That was fun. We were like trying to do business, and then we both looked at each other and we're like, "We're kind of partying right now. Let's continue this conversation later." Yeah, <laughs> I don't think either of us can handle what we're talking about at the moment. Uh, but man, uh, so the first year that we ever went to this party, it was held in you know, the bowling alley that we went to this year. Yeah. And then the year, the, the two years after that, it was held in this really posh, like fancy touristy bowling alley, a uh, few steps away from Disneyland. And it was just never the same vibe. I'm so glad that they got it back into the original bowling alley. Yeah. That place was really cool. It just fit the mood of, of everyone. It was like this whole like den of thieves, like the rascals of Nam like attitude, like people getting together, like it's just such an incredible thing to like everyone at NAM is friendly with each other, but then for them to all party together afterwards and be so friendly and so positive, And you can tell that there's just a really strong community between all these builders. It's just a bunch of fun. That reminds me. Um, I mean, we've met them before, but uh, at the talk, at the taco party, somebody was like John, John Snyder, uh -huh. Just handing out hats. You got your hat. And uh, I was talking about how like I lo lost my walrus hat, super bummed, so I need a replacement. And so I saw him, I was like, hey, man, do you have any hats left? And he's like, I have two. One of them's taken. Now both of them are taken because the second one's yours. Nice. And I was like, so I was like, looking, I spent, he was like, well, I'm a, usually around this area, so whatever. And I, I just never randomly ran into him the next day. So like, I don't know, like. Four o'clock on Saturday, I just get a uh, message, and it's just a picture of a hat in front of, I think, the JHS booth, <laughs> and I just responded, I'll be right there. You booked it. Yeah, I was like, whatever I was doing, I was like, I'm not, I, I got to go. I, I have a, a very important meeting right now. Why to go? We got to go. A hat's waiting for me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that was, uh, I got my hat. I've been wearing that thing a lot. Should we uh, tackle the next ad? No, we got to do some housekeeping. Oh, man. yeah, yeah. Are there any other people, Nam, you can think of that stick out to you? I don't know. We talked we about, it. well, you mentioned, you know, you went to Blake's pizza thing, but yeah. I didn't. Blake, from, no, you did. Not you said, this year. You went to, oh, no, you went to dinner with Blake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thursday, and the we went, started. So I, I saw, you know, I saw Blake uh, Friday and Saturday yeah, when yeah. I was up there. So that was cool. And he brought, uh, Justin, who we met from the first time mm -hmm. uh, Blake came down, so that that was cool. All right, let's do housekeeping. Yeah, uh, so big shouts to uh, Caleb Shrum Cook, uh, who joined uh, on our Patreon at the one dollar level. Oh, fun! Uh, Brandon Cruz, who joined our Patreon at the best friends level, the five dollar level, and uh, Matt Weinberger and R.J. Smith, who both joined at the inner circle level. Jeez, we picked up some and people. I hope that covers everybody. I I try to keep track of it, but yeah, there was a lot and. Um, it was busy. Uh, I will say this has been, so, I guess, soft running for about a week, but this is the first time oh, I'm gee, announcing here it. it comes. On both the uh, patreon.podbean.com for 60 Cycle Hum and our Patreon, patreon.com slash, is it also 60 Cycle, patreon.com slash 60 Cycle Hum? Yeah, and there's like a dash that says podcast after it now. Okay, yeah. uh, so you can, but if you go on Patreon and search for it, uh, there is now a $25 level. It's limited to 25 spots on each platform. Oh, jeez. Um, 
$25 level, uh, here's what you get. You get everything the inner circle, get, circle gets, plus you get to tell the guys in the inner circle that you're giving more money to us than they are. <laughs> So it's strictly bragging rights. Yeah. Because there's literally... This, the group, the, literally the group is just called bragging rights. There's literally nothing more that we can give you. We've given the inner circle everything. This is like a ridiculous social experiment on your part. This is all Steve, guys. I, I guess I said, yeah, let's do it. But Steve is, is the brain behind this. You know, we've said it before, like, uh, and uh, we've said this before. We'll, we'll just always keep saying it. Caleb gave it the one dollar level. Everything counts. Like the twenty five dollar thing is kind of a joke, and I'm still really curious to see who the first person to do it will be. Right, right. Um, but if everybody who listens gave it one dollar, like oh, that man. would be insane. I mean, the one dollar givers are the winners, in my opinion. Yeah. I'd, I'd love it if everyone gave one dollar. Not everyone, but most people. Like if you can swing it, man, that would change so much. For us, it could be incredible, but I gotta say already, the inner circle makes so much happen. Like Steve and I didn't have to pull out of our own pockets to do anything for Nam. Yeah, we basically like, did. And that's a huge deal. Like Steve and I, we're just we're not neither of us are rich. We're both regular people with families and and bills and stuff like that. And other jobs. We would not be able to do what we do on this show without the inner circle. Like yeah. a lot of it just would not happen, especially like things like Nam and getting getting coverage of Nam and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, we we were basically able to do um the podcast at cost this year with all the with all the bonus stuff. I don't think I don't know if you paid for anything out of pocket. No. Put um, it all in the IC. And so it's all just been and we say out of the IC, but that's you know, all of our uh all of our pledgers all together, not just yeah. the inner circle guys. You're right, um, right, right. That's what I mean. Like but, every, uh, everyone who pledges so yeah, to big, the show. Big thanks everyone for supporting the show. Let's keep this thing moving because no one wants to hear us talk about them. Yeah, they want to hear about cool stuff. Like this Casio DG20. Wait, is this the cool stuff? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I think it's kind of cool. Lucas River sent this. It's a Casio DG20. It says, uh, it's $125. It says, like a digital piano, except in a guitar with many sounds and rhythms. Can be played through an amp and has MIDI capabilities, soft shell case, strap, and manual included. Have you ever played one of these? I have. I've, I ha- I've I have actually well. had personal I experience with I don't with really me. remember very much about it, but I... I, I remember it feeling one. cheesy as hell. Yeah, don't they have like plastic strings? Uh, so they have like plastic strum strings that they don't go up the fretboard. And then the fretboard is like a series of like rubberized buttons. So uh, like every like every string placement and fret placement on the, the fretboard is a like a rubberized button. That's how I, I remember it anyways. Remember that. I thought it was full length. No, the strings don't go all the way up the fretboard. It's just like a rhythm area. Unless I played a different model. For the life of me, I can't find like a good picture of one of these somewhere else. I'm looking at it and I, it, you could read it with your eyes one way or another, but I really think I'm seeing what I'm talking about here. I don't think those strings extend all the way up the fretboard. It's just a strumming area. Mm, hold on. No, dude. Really? Show me. Let me see if I can find it. Well, then it's a different model than what I played, but I played something similar. Google. Oh, that's a friggin' still from a YouTube video. Sorry, I'm trying to find like a I an actual you. good picture. I believe in you. That shows us. I mean, these things are usable. You can make sound with them. So the DG1, I think. Has the strum strings. Only has the strum strings. Oh, here we go. So here's the DG20 on a guitar teardown. That's the headstock. Oh, yeah, it does have strings, but they're like weird plastic strings. Yeah, that's what I was saying. So, like, they're these funky plastic strings, but I think the one that you what played... What happens if those break? I don't know. Are you out of luck? I don't know. They're really weird looking. That is weird. You just got to melt them back together if it breaks, I guess. 125 for this. If, if this was local, I might pick it up for curiosity's sake, you know? But the one I played was a different model, apparently, and had just the plastic strum strings, yeah. which are probably the same material. Yeah, I think they, they are. Uh, so this must have some sort of sensing for where the string touches the fret or something like that um, to control, basically, you know, like 
a roll-in synth? Well, it might just be like uh, maybe you just program whatever synthesizer you want, but you're playing the guitar and getting that sound. So it's not necessarily sensing the string any more than like a single piezo transducer. Right. No, sure, sure. So well, no, the, the, the strings aren't tuned to anything. Oh, that's right. That's right. They're, they, no they just represent actual strings. tuners here. They just represent strings. Hmm. Uh, I think it's a contact with uh, the fret that tells you that tells the computer in it where you are. Right. I wonder well, if that system is better or worse than the butts, button system. It's probably more natural than the button system. It probably I, is more I natural. That, it might be thing. prone to less failure because the one I played had failures all across the fretboard. Oh board. yeah. Because these things get old and those, those things start to crap out on you, like yeah. individual buttons and whatnot. So you're saying for $125, though, like you think... I might check it out. I mean, I don't know what the going rate on this is. It, it might be lower, I would but... offer 75 mm. and then I would settle for 100 <laughs> That's different than would you pay $125, which you said yes to already. I now, you're at re- this pr- now you're reading. No, I'm saying at this price point, I would be, uh, I'd be uh, curious, per- pursuing it. You'd be pursuing it. Okay. Yeah, locally. I don't know if that's fair. Maybe these go for a lot cheaper, but that, that's like disposable money for me right now. Right, right. Not disposable, but you know what I mean. I can take a risk on something. Yeah. Uh, I think the body is kind of funky in the right way. What do you think of the body shape of these things? Uh, I mean, I, it's very. I 80s think it's futuristic. I think that I think that's the thing is I think we're in a time now where we look at it and go like, oh, that's kind of cool in an old way, right? But at the time that I played one, it probably was like two thousand four, two thousand five. It, it was just, old in a bad it just way. Just looked yeah, exactly like you know ten, twelve years ago. It was just old in a bad way. I would say I would play a regular guitar that had a shape similar to this. I feel like it needs either the armrest to be gone mm-hmm. or it needs a little bit of a top horn to even out the shape. If you um, if you picked a builder to build this in a, into a body shape, what builder do you think would be the, Ooh, the builder to, to capture the essence of this? Well, who, who's what builder makes like angular guitars like this? Ah, uh, Millimetric. Yeah, I guess that would work. That, yeah. That's the company I'm thinking of, right? I think so. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. I know it's tough. Years ago, like a couple of years ago at NAM, there was a company that had made a uh, like a Les Paul style shaped guitar, uh-huh. but they had shaped the carve of it to be completely made out of polygons. Like it just had like hard edges all over the place. Like it was cut Weird. like a diamond. Yeah. I really liked that look. Like whoever made that could tackle this, I think, and do it well. Hmm. Or you could just buy one of these, slap a neck on it, <laughs> and a real bridge, and convert it. There you go. You think? You, you go. think? It, how hard do you think it would be to convert this into a real guitar? I don't Assuming, know. The body's all plastic. You'd have to reinforce it inside. It'd yeah. be like a Dan Electro. There'd be a big block of wood inside. Yeah. It would be a really cool concept. Like people would see you playing it and be like, whoa, he's really to be very confused. Playing that thing. And I thought those were not real guitars. What is going on? Uh, there's people who get these things. Like you said, it has MIDI capabilities and they could turn them into MIDI controllers for all kinds of modern sounds. Mm-hmm. That's kind of a neat concept, I guess. Do we have anything else left to say about this? No. I was trying to milk you and try to get you like, Angry? Like, say Worked something up. about it, but I guess you don't have anything to say. I, I don't, don't have anything I, to say. I thought I had something to say, but, like, I think it's just, like, an idea. It's an idea in my head. I think I would... I Once once you pointed out that you can't actually tune it, I just started tuning it out. You lost in full interest? <laughs> I was just like, oh. Like, oh, yeah. uh, never mind. Yeah. Who cares? Whatever. Yeah. I guess the answer to, like, what do you do if the strings break is just find literally anything that will fit the spacing. Just wind. Just fishing, fishing line. Fish, there, there you go. Fishing line will do it. All right. Let's, uh, let's continue talking about NAM. Yeah. We're going to talk about the gear of NAM now. Do you want to finish talking about, uh, were you talking about Nanalog? Yeah. I was just saying, um, so they've got one of the things about the Nanalog um, wave function, uh-huh. that's what it's called. Uh, that's cool, is it? So, you know, in uh, the Nanalog stuff that's out is kind of like um, concept testing, I guess. 
It's an education uh, in a pedal. Uh, so the pedals that they had there, they all had like the maybe like the original, whatever the original clipping option was. Okay, and so what you're, you need you need to. Uh, you need, I forgot the word, but you need to say what you're saying. It's like he had, he has three original pedals, right? So, but then he had a bunch of pedals that were from other builders, and he modded them to have the uh, the nanotech clipping in it, right? So, so for example, um, he want like he got a uh, blues breaker style pedal. So I think uh-huh. he had a morning glory that had the whatever the standard clipping. Uh, Diode is was there the clipping uh, transistor do, whatever? Do we in call there. them diodes? Do we call them? I don't do know the circuit them? well enough to say what is yeah. clipping that. But these, what he's making, are nano transistors. Yeah, from, from, so the little slivers of carbon yeah, that are so, like a few like nanoparticles. Yeah, thick so, he, or something so he's like using that. that. So, and, and with that, like with the, um, with the wave function. I mean, they they work on quantum tunneling. No big deal. Yeah, um, I don't know what it means. <laughs> with with the wave function, basically, it has four settings on it: silicone, germanium, uh, N1. N1, and N2, yeah. and they're all different things. And the thing that I was impressed on that is typically on like now, granted, this is like a different clipping style, but um, on other pedals I've had that have like uh, where you can switch the clipping style. Usually, you gain something at the loss of something else, if right. that makes sense. So, say you have like something that's hard clipping versus soft clipping. So, the hard clipping is going to give you like a lot of like a lot of low end and then a lot of clipping. Yeah. But the soft clipping is going to like give you like a more mild drive sound, but you're also going to lose a lot of low end. Yeah. Like you might lose something about the general EQing of. The other setting, and what I found that really interesting with the N two, um, I don't remember the N one as well, but I remember with the N two setting that um, it was a very like easy like middle of the road like light overdrive sound, uh-huh. but it had a ton of low end still. Yeah, so it felt like one of the heavier clipping uh, components in terms of overall EQ. But it was a much softer clipping that was actually happening. Yeah. And I don't want to spend the whole uh, part of the show talking about only in analog because we got a lot of ground to cover yeah. from Nam. But uh, I actually have the pedals here and I have a di- it comes with a little diagram showing you what's going on. And the N2 setting, which so far is my favorite on there. And it's just so interesting to swap quickly between germanium silicone N1 and N2. Yeah. But the N2 setting, on the diagram, it shows you exactly what's going on. Like uh, the other three settings, they all have like this really tight grouping where the gain starts with a certain amount of of, uh, input into the circuit Mm -hmm. and then drop off relatively quickly past a certain point. The N2 is like wide open Hmm. versus those settings. Like the gain just like is really gradual with your input into it with your plane with your plane dynamics it's a really smooth transition from no gain to full gain uh compared to the other uh the clipping settings and i think that really lends to just this like smooth and natural like organic like amp like sort of gain characteristic it doesn't sound exactly like a like an amplifier's clipping mm-hmm. but it sounds like if a tube screamer was an amplifier if that right. makes sense like it's just this really slight like you can i can sit there and play it and just slowly increase my playing and and hear that there's no jump anywhere mm-hmm. where all of a sudden now the game has like jumped in mm-hmm. with my playing dynamics it's smooth all the way through your playing dynamics going from zero gain to full gain it's it's kind of a if at first if you don't know what's going on and you plug into this thing and you start playing you're like oh, okay yeah it's kind of like a fizzy tube screamer style overdrive or something like that. But then when you really pay attention to stuff like that and, and feel the way it reacts versus the other settings in the same pedal. Yeah. You're like, okay, there's something special going on here. Yeah. It's, it's pretty incredible. So let's talk about some of the other gear there. Uh, what was like, what really stood out to you? What was a favorite of NAM 18? Um, the Empress Zoya. Okay. You got that to work. Oh, I got I, some, I had some help. I sat down with that thing 
it was working. I pressed two buttons and it was no longer working. <laughs> and I tried to get it back and I couldn't figure it out. Well, that's because you changed to like a unmapped preset. Whatever that means, man. Okay. So the Empress Zoya is, um, it's so the the price has actually come out. Um, I if I'm recalling correctly, I think it's four. You're gonna hit the market at four hundred fifty dollars, uh-huh. which a lot of people are freaking out about, um, saying that like, oh, that's really expensive and whatever. But I mean, it, it is I expensive. I think it's on par with Empress's like most expensive stuff. The the reverb. Right. And the uh, Echo, is it Echo Station, I think it's called? Yeah. Um, so it's kind of like on par with those prices. But the Zoya is basically a complete pedal board in one box. If you say so, man. Um, they're calling it like <laughs> a synth engine or something. I, I forget what the exact uh, term, term they use is. But basically um, what you can do with the Zoya is you have a bunch of different um, parameters available mm-hmm. and it's this grid of, of soft touch rubber buttons like you would on like an Akai drum rubber machine. Rubber baby buttons? Rubber baby bu- buggy bumpers? <laughs> rubber baby buggy bumpers? Rubber baby Sorry, bu- bu- Please buggy continue bumpers? with your story, um, So it's got these little rubber buttons on it like you'd find on like a, a drum machine or something and basically you can program the different buttons to be like different uh, sounds are like different different things. So to, to start, like you have to assign like an input and an output. Right. And you have a, your input, you have a left, right input and a left, right output. And so that's two buttons. And then you can assign like, for example, like uh, you can assign a section to be your distortion. Uh, and distortion has, um, I think, again, a distortion I think is three buttons, an input, um, a gain level, and an output. Okay. And um, and you can set up a bunch of different things. So more complex, uh, uh, more complex things. So it's kind of like, like building a signal chain in like a more traditional multi effects unit, like like a Helix or something like that. But you have to like complete the chain, or it doesn't work. Right. So that was the whole thing. That was the issue that I was having, is that I um, was just plug like I was making the different. I forget what they call them, but. Um, I was making the different boxes, so to speak. So I had an input and an output and a, and a distortion. Um, but I didn't know that you had to like hold, say, the input left and the distortion input, hold both of those buttons down at the same time to link them. Then you have to link the outputs. And once you like, yeah, oh, geez, once you. This thing sounds so confusing to me. Okay, so think about it like this you've got this, you've got this board and you have a bunch of different parameters. Uh huh. What you're doing is you're built conceptualize the entire thing as a pedal board, right? That you can decide like, do I want a distortion? Do I not want a distortion? Do I want a delay? Do I not want a delay? And then you can tweak different parameters for all these different sounds individually. All you're doing with linking them together, it's you're putting in patch cables, right? 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 So you just have to know the secret on how to put the patch. Yeah, cables it's more together. about understanding like everything and, and figuring out what like what kind of parameters you want to tweak and stuff. And there's some really crazy things you can do. Like you can put in like LFO generators and different like very synthesizer heavy things. There was one setting on the one that I was using called 12 delays. Uh-huh. And you'd play like one note and it would just like generate like a I don't know, like a bunch of different crazy sounds. It kind of reminded me of the uh was it the spatial um What's that thing called from Earthquaker devices? It's like the orange pedal. Uh huh. Um, spatial anomaly, something like that. Um, so it it's it's just like a lot of there's a lot of like potential to do a lot of crazy things with yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. But I think if you even just thought about it as like, oh, I can have like five or six different configurations of basic pedal boards. Yeah. Like, if you think about it that way. Because you're saving presets and you can cycle through them and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, so, and if everything's are like everything's basically all on, like, you have all these presets. And all of the sounds that I was dialing in, like, that were just kind of, like, simple, like, again, like, pedal board replacement type sounds, like, they all sounded really good. Uh, the delays and the reverbs, you know, Empress sure. has done a good job with their other delays and reverbs, so I thought they sounded great. The distortion sounded pretty good at, like, either lower or higher gain settings. So overall, like I thought that the sounds I, were, I was getting out of this thing were, were a lot of fun. 
And it could just be something where like maybe, I mean, you know, over $400 seems like a lot of money I to drop the, on like a desktop unit, but it would be like a really fun desktop unit. I think it's the sort of thing where if, if you need it, you know that you need it and you connect with it already. And you're like, finally, someone made the thing that's in my head. Right. You know? But I look at it and I'm like, oh, geez, I don't want to have to read a manual that's two inches thick to figure this out. Yeah, I would definitely say so. When this thing first was kind of... Uh, put out there uh people were talking about it and somebody said like oh you guys should just buy one and make a demo without like reading the manual and that definitely would have just been a 15 minute demo of ryan and i yelling at each other (laughs) well how do you even demo something like that if you can do anything well it was like i guess not like a demo but like a they wanted us to basically make an unboxing no i mean like if if okay like oh man it would just take forever well, um, like I said, that's the whole thing is like we would unbox it. We'd be like, oh, this looks really cool. And we'd plug it in and be like, oh, here's all these presets. They sound great. And then we'd go to mil- build our own thing and we wouldn't be able to do anything yeah, with it yeah. because we wouldn't understand how it works. All right. So anything else you saw at NAMM that, that stuck um, out to you? Those were the two big things, I guess. Um, I went and checked out uh, Chapman Guitars. Chapman, oh, yeah. Because I always hear people joking, like they joke in comments, like, oh, how come you're not playing a Chapman in your video? I thought every demo guy played Chapman. Oh, right. <laughs> so I thought, I might as well go check these out. I'd, I'd looked them up online before, and they're just not really like my speed. Like, you watch our demo videos, and I like to play funky guitars. I've got, yeah. you know, airlines and modded fenders. and the Hey, they have a reverse headstock Telecaster. Oh, crazy. That's just insane. So with humbuckers, weird. so weird. But uh, anyways, I got to I got to pick some up and feel them, and yeah, I get it. They're they're very modern, like super flat radius, like kind of shreddy, genty, you know, math rocky kind of guitars. I get why people would like them. Uh, I, from what I understand, a bunch of them are really expensive. Yeah, but yeah, we, well, we already like hang out with people who I think, I think, like make expensive guitars like on the same level. So because I've been seeing like on the various different like European based guitar groups I'm on, people complaining like, "Oh, I can't believe this guitar is like three grand." I was like, "I know guys who make guitars for six grand." Like, well, so I think the deal relax. with Chapman is is the the bulk of their offering are they like is, imports is import, and I I believe they just are starting to creep into the high-end market with are some they, like uk built are they like a house brand of andertons or something like that i don't know if they're a house brand like, i don't know very much about them but like picking up on people's comments about them on different you know youtube videos and stuff or like different forms that's kind of like the impression i got because it's connected to rob chapman right? right who is like an andertons boy yeah but i don't think chapman guitars are necessarily a um well, obviously, Anderton's exclusive. Obviously, I don't know the full story behind these things. Yeah, Rift City Guitar sells Chapman guitars. Sure. I mean, I don't know, man. But anyways, I thought those were just fine. Like, if you like them, I have no judgment against you. Uh, they're just not my style. Uh, I, there's, like I said, there's the joke that that everyone who's a YouTube demoer gets sent one. Yeah. Or something like that. I really doubt that's the case. I mean, obviously, Rob Chapman has a lot of youtube demo friends and when you make stuff sometimes you hook up your friends i don't know them so i'm not gonna get hooked up i'm not saying i want to get hooked up i'm just saying maybe that's the case i don't know but uh anyways other fun stuff i liked at nam uh oh there's that ventress reverb i already made oh, a yeah. video talking about it uh aaron abubo came up to me at the liquid lunch party the uh the gear and beer thing that sinusoid set up and he was like Ryan, you have to go to Source Audio right now, and you have to go check this thing out. They put an outboard reverb simulation on it, and it's like the new thing on the Ventress. I was like, well, I have to go check this out now. As soon as I was done drinking and pulling you up off the floor and you know throwing all your empties away, <laughs> I went right down to Source Audio. I walked up to the booth. I put on the headphones and started playing. A, a guy walked up. And uh, he saw that I was playing with the spring setting. And I was like, I was playing with the regular spring setting. I was like, yeah, there's a little bit of like a drip in this. Like it's, this is a really good spring reverb, like amp spring reverb emulation. And then all of a sudden he grabs a knob and he twists it to the secret middle position. I hit one note, like palm muted, low E. And there it was. The drip. A real 
damn But if it's drip. a secret position, are you going to be able to find it again? Yeah. No, what it is is like it's a, it's a new download that's going to be on the Ventress. Oh, okay. And it's got a, a rotary knob with lights all around it for the, the, the stock settings. Uh-huh. And so basically when you twist it from one setting to the next, the two lights will light up for the two settings. Oh, okay. And now you're on an in-between setting that you, gotcha. that you know is there. And I spent a couple minutes playing with it, and I just was completely blown away by how good it sounded. And I told the guy, like, my whole deal, I was like, hey, I have a YouTube channel. I'm obsessed with Dripping Reverb because I'm a surf rock guy. Uh, You can either, we can work something out. You can send this to me. I'll buy it if we don't figure something out. But I'm going to do videos of this pedal. This is just how it's going to go down. And then I went home and I looked up the price of them and I was like, oh, geez, what did I get myself into? Right. Well, I mean, it's like the Ventress um, is, I bu- is, I think, designed to compete with one of the big boys from Strymon. Yeah. I'm not sure which one. I started watching videos about it and reading like everything it does and it's crazy. Right. It does so much. So I get it. It's like 400 bucks or something like that, but it covers a lot of ground. But, you know, I'm getting into it just for that outboard spring sound. But I'm I'm excited to explore. Oh, by the way, uh, on Tuesday, the guy that I was talking to wrote me, and he's like, "I watched all your <laughs> reverb videos, and uh, yeah, we're definitely gonna get one in your hands." Cool. So, uh, from what I understand, there's gonna be one in the mail as soon as he gets one uh, lined up on his desk that has the outboard thing loaded yeah. onto it. Um, so I'm really excited for that. I'm going to give this thing a bunch of coverage. I'm going to, of course, show all, off all the normal settings in a video, but you know I'm going to make a bunch of videos comparing it to various reverbs. Yeah. Like, I'm going to have a field day with this thing. So I'm stoked about that. Uh, other gear at NAM. do we want to talk about uh, Harmony coming back? Um, yeah, but before that, because I'll forget, um, I went to... Uh, the DRS racks. Booth, oh yeah, yeah. Uh, got uh, and I Doug uh, Cowers uh, racks uh, uh, project apparently makes uh, they're they're very successful for him. He makes these really high quality guitar racks that you can they're modular and you can stack them. And yeah. You can add drawers to them and stuff. Um, really, really incredible racks. But so that's cool. But, I'm always checking but, out Doug's rack. Yeah. Someone had to make that joke. Yeah, uh, I went over there to check out uh, the Equits guitars Devera bass. Oh, I remember man. how like a few episodes ago I was saying like the Devera, like the Devera guitar is not like the shape. Like it's I don't know. There's something about it that just like doesn't jive yeah, with me. Yeah. It's like the offset shape. Right? Yeah, uh, the Devera bass body oh, is baby. like perfect. It looks, it looks really good. As and, a I, bass. and like it's so different. Like that when I saw it, like I didn't. Even, it didn't even register in my brain that it, that was, it was the that same. Was the yeah. Devera shape. Uh, but it looks great. Uh, it plays. It played fantastic. Um, didn't get to plug it in. Don't really know what it sounds like. But that was super cool. Um, I'm really stoked to uh, see that. I don't know if that's that was a prototype. I don't know uh, what kind of timelines uh, he's expecting to to go um, to market with those. If it's even going to be this year, or if it's sure, sure, something that he's messing around with and seeing what maybe kind of it'll feedback just be a one off. And but he's uh, like, I hate working on bases. Never that, again. That was uh, that was super cool to check out. Yeah, I'm not a bass player, and I was impressed by that thing. It's just a really great look, and so cool of Doug to host a few other people's guitars in his booth. Uh, I got to meet the uh, the Frank brothers. Yeah, I was going to say you haven't mentioned the Frank brothers. There's guitars. three of them. I always assumed there was two, three brothers. But anyways, I follow those guys on Instagram, and they just make an incredible looking guitar. Uh, they're a brand that, like, they incorporate like design into their guitar, which scratches a lot of itches for me. Um, it just feels like a graphic designer's guitar. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot going on with it that uh, is very exciting to my eyeballs, uh, but they they make basically one shape of guitar. Yeah, even though they have a couple different models with a couple different features, they all have pretty much the exact same shape, and they've just it just works. It's just fantastic. So go look those guys up. Uh, other new stuff at Nam. We're running a little long here. Do you care? I don't care, man. I don't care either. Uh, geez, what else was new at Nam that I really liked? Oh, uh, I really liked the uh, the new Squire Contemporary Telecaster 
which is unusual. For yeah, me. you sent me a you sent me the. Uh, I mean, I watched your video on it, and uh, I was checking it out, and that thing looks looks really sharp. Well, the th- they, the they've th- done stuff like that before that were kind of like the HH Bullet Telecaster, right, right, and similar. But this one, like, it's a twelve inch uh, radius neck. The thing that actually I thought was the most surprising thing about it was the belly cut. It's got a belly because cut. Because Fender with the Telecaster has like always kind of like avoided uh, putting out belly cut models. Well, what they're doing with this contemporary line in, with Squire is that they're trying to make like, like high performance kind of metal uh, capable guitars right. that have a bit of a classic look to them. Yeah. And it's scratching an itch for me. Because I've been falling in love with like twelve inch radius guitars mm-hmm. for a while now. I mean the the, the Titan is twelve inches, the uh, uh, the Bullet Mustang I have is twelve inches. Like I have a few guitars around that have the twelve inch radius, and it's just like I think this is more my style versus uh, what is it like nine and a half for normal Fenders. Yeah, yeah. So playing this thing just felt really natural to me. It was a lot of fun to play. I think it looks great. It's got a really fun red metal flake on it. Mm-hmm. It was very festive. It's got very. two two hot humbuckers in it, yeah, which is always going to be a blast. And it's got all the standard like like Fender parts, so you could go mod crazy on this thing if you want. Right. I bought one today. Oh, really? <laughs> I pulled the trigger on one. Nice. And so I'll be doing some videos of it and demos of it. Uh, I also have my eye on the. Uh, uh, the Dan Electro 59 XT, yeah, which I got to play and I did a video of, and I thought that was a lot of fun too. Great playing guitar, a bit more expensive than the Squire, but it was a real player's guitar, I'll say that. So uh, two really affordable guitars, the, the, the Dan Electro comes in at $500, and I was surprised because some of their stuff has been creeping up into the 800s and 700s lately. I was surprised that they're only char- charging 500 for this thing. Um but yeah, those were another couple of cool things at Nam. How much was the Squire? Uh, uh, three fifty. Well, I have on a, like the higher end for Squire. It but is still not but too bad. I have I have a gut feeling that by the end of the year, they're going to be you know guitars that are on sale at Guitar Center for two seventy five, right? Two fifty things like that. And I'll be screaming at people to go buy them because they're good guitars. And they have that matching headstock thing that just like. I've always loved that. I've never owned a guitar that with the matching headstock, so I'm really looking forward to getting my hands on one of them and playing around with it. Apparently, the the red color is because that's the color I want is is uh, not available for a couple of weeks from Sweetwater. So oh, so you it, it'll give me some wait. give me some time to get ready and cover some other stuff before I dive into that. But yeah, I'm pretty stoked on it. Uh, oh, another thing, backtracking to people at Nam. Uh huh. A moment that sticks out in my head that was really fun, and maybe when, when I'm done with this, you you have a final moment that you talk about, and then we'll uh, wrap the show up. Um, so f- Thursday night when I'm having drinks with the guitar nerds, uh, I'm sitting there, we're just hanging out, and all of a sudden uh, Mark Packham and Jay Cross start having a fight about various battery amps. And it was just a really fun moment to be hanging out with people that you've listened to on a podcast for so long. Right. And basically get to witness them doing gear of the year right in front of you. (laughs) And I just got to say, it was a pretty magical moment for me. Uh, It's just like, that's what's so great about Nam is getting, getting to hang out with these people that maybe you've only experienced from afar. And then all of a sudden they're right in front of you having a real uh, conversation right there where you can hear them and it's just a trip you know so do you have any uh final things you want to cover um i don't know yet i do want to mention one thing that's going to be a little half preview half i don't know what but we got to hang out with uh this guy his name's uh sconey mm-hmm. from uh, oh, a yeah, company good, called music area good old sconey from the music area um, and uh we got an electric guitar case from them that we're going to be trying out. They are originally an, an OEM builder. So this is interesting. Uh, for like a bunch of different, basically a bunch of different brands. Do we want to say what brands? Um, I, we, I think we do can you think maybe it's go too, in. Do you think it's too risky? No, I, I don't think Do you think, think it's, it's rude? Do you think it's rude to mention who they built for? I think they, let me see if they say on their website so I can just read I it I think off. we could safely say that they built for 
most of the guitar yeah, so brands it says, that you could mention off the top of your head. It says, over the past 26 years, we have been focusing on designing and producing bags and suitcases and in providing ODM and OEM services for numerous big brands like Yamaha, F-Base, et cetera. Um, I know the the case that we got, they said that was a modification of a case that they were making for Fender. Um, was it for like the John Mayer for Strat? For the John Mayer yeah. Strat. So um, this is the model is the AA31. Uh, I had to look it up um, because I didn't actually have the title, name of it. But that's something we're going to be uh, demoing. So uh, the- and by demoing, that might like we're going to do a little review tryout. Uh, you guys might remember our mono our mono case uh, video. Yeah, probably going to do something maybe along those lines, but a little more. Uh, Intense. Intense, maybe. The so that, the, that demo might be like we might demo the guitar and we might – or demo the, the case. case and we might demolition the case Yeah, uh, to see how, see how it goes. But uh, basically, we were given the green light to test out the ruggedness of this bad boy. Yeah. So the guy saw my video where I threw the mono case out my second-story window and the guitar survived. And he's like, yeah, do that and more of that. So we're going to get a little crazy with this thing, I think. Yeah, it's a really nice case. Yeah, it's, uh, it's really like well futuristic built. Looking. I think after we do the do the video, you and I are going to have a drinking contest to see who gets to keep it. <laughs> Is that how we're going to decide? I, I mean, do you we could just do a good old-fashioned street fight. Oh my gosh, I Steve, I'll let you have it. I mean, I I'm not, I don't even know what I would I'd do with it's it. It's not even I've for me to decide cases. if if I'll let you or not. You can have it. I'd be we're partners here. But we, I want to like videotape a fight. Or okay, a, you want to fight me? I'll fight you, Steve. Whatever you want to do. So I'm, aggressive I'm, right I, now. I, I'll give you whatever you want. If you want to fight, I'll fight you. <laughs> uh, so that that was that was kind of cool. Just to like, that's the first time I feel feel like uh, somebody. Like hit us up on Facebook and we like actually kind of planned up yeah uh, something to be like hey let's meet up because I want to give you something that to to take home and like mess around with yeah yeah um, where it was like really planned out um, as far as show highlights I mean it was kind of a, a whirlwind I actually do feel like I got way more done on Friday from like a seeing things perspective. Um, than I did on Saturday. It was cool to check out Beatronics again. And, oh, and yeah. Beatronics stuff is so cool. Last year, I felt like uh, when we saw their stuff, I felt like, ah, this is really cool, but it, you know, it feels like it's too custom. Um, this year, it felt to me, it felt a lot more like a production line. Well, they had production lines last year, but they were showcasing their custom right, stuff. Right, right. So, so that was a thing this year that I thought was really cool to see, like just... I think I feel like they're, last year they maybe had like the royal jelly a hand, pedal. A handful of they had like a handful of pedals that you could check out last year and kind of see what they yeah. were capable of. Where, whereas this year there was just a lot more stuff. Same size booth, yeah, but a lot more to look at. They have one of the best demo stations, yeah, at NAM. Uh, they ha- it's headphones, and instead of giving you a guitar to play with, they have a big red button you slam with your fist and it plays a loop of guitar playing before the pedal and you get to adjust the the pedal while the guitar is playing. So it may seem like, Oh, that's dumb. You don't get to play guitar, but it's like you get to have both hands on the pedal, twisting knobs, really discovering it while someone else is basically playing for you. A really brilliant demo station. And I think everyone else should do that. Um, But yeah, their, their Royal jelly pedal, which is, I don't even know how to describe it. It's like two fuzzes and an overdrive and like a, a like a a gate control, and right? Like, so well, so it's like a two channel pedal, but those but each side could be a, a fuzz or an overdrive. Oh, yeah, the, basically, there's a knob that goes from overdrive to fuzz, like the way you want to blend it in. Um, and then there is like a like it's called the buzz button. Yeah, and that is that the gate. What you're saying, like yeah, it's like, like a gate control gives you a gate control. So it's like it's kind of like the the fifty fifty. In that, in between just a couple basic settings, you have like kind of infinite options, right? And it's just brilliant. Like, and I think Robert Keeley called it his favorite favorite pedal. Oh, really? This Nam, like he made a post about it. Yeah, he's like, it, he, what he said is like all other pedal builders look at what they're doing. 
this is like the high water mark. Yeah, I know. Um, I've seen their stuff. I saw uh, Sean Pierce not Johnson not just in circuit really design about it too, but in aesthetics. Yeah, and pre- pre- like presentation of their brand, they are nailing it, and mm-hmm. I think that's the future of boutique pedals like boutique pedals have kind of coasted on this like oh here's a box with a simple print on it uh with you know like a regular switch and some knobs from you know like a mammoth or something like that right this takes it to a whole nother level the aesthetics that they do yeah. just like custom knobs or like hardware that you've never seen before incredible like aesthetic presentation they're works of art every single yeah. pedal and just really smart circuit design too, like their Btronics is killing it. Like yeah. literally the future, I'd say. All right, uh, before we hit our last ad, let's take a minute or less than a minute to thank our sponsor, uh, Sinusoid Pro Audio Couture. Big thanks to Sinusoid. Uh, we didn't dip into all the glory that Sinusoid provides this year. This name. But they, their arms were open to us if we needed to stay with them or wanted to party with them. We just got busy like networking with a lot of people, which made me feel sad. But those Gearslum boys, they got to have the full Sinusoid experience, and I'm a little jealous. Uh, but anyways, you should support Sinusoid, if not because they supply the best cables in the business with the best guarantee in the business. I'm talking 100-year guarantee. Your great-grandkids are going to love these cables. Uh, You should support them because they support programming that you already love and they make it possible in a lot of ways. And they're just does sound like an NPR pitch. I keep working on it, man. I'm trying to get a job at NPR right now, (laughs) apparently. But yeah, like Sinusoid are the guys, and you know, their cables were all over NAM this year. Yeah, you need to work on your uh, vocal fry. (laughs) Sinusoid cables, the choice of builders all over NAM winter 2018. Yeah. Um, all right. Let's hit this last ad. Uh, do we want to? This is an hour and twenty yeah, minute man. long episode. Let's, uh, dude. let's do the thing. All right. Let's do it. Piano shells. This was sent to us again by uh, Michael Van Zant. Ad Zant. If you want to, if you see a Craigslist ad that you want us to check out, uh, the best way to do it is to send it to sixty cycle humcast at gmail dot com. All right. This says, Are you looking for a piano shell for your keyboard? Piano shells are the solution. Uh, we manufacture beautiful piano shells with the most options. Looking for a beautiful five-foot baby grand piano shell? Piano shells provides answers for every budget. Our piano shells are beautiful, lightweight, and inexpensive. We now offer acrylic and custom wrap piano shells. Advertise your business or yourself. Check out all of our small, lightweight, portable piano shells. Check out all of our size options. Piano shells now offers uh, uh, prop lid and pedal light options on all of our models. These beautiful piano shelves and say piano shelves again and add elegance to any environment. Learn more about all the benefits of owning a beautiful piano shell. Oh God! Please get please get in touch for much more information. Uh, so basically, there's a thing uh, that is like super been super trendy for the last few years, which is you go find like a derelict upright piano off of Craigslist, right? And then you gut it, you get you... it for free because people are like giving these things away as long as you pay for somebody to move it. And then you gut it in their driveway and leave the guts in front of their house. Yeah, and you <laughs> take the piano shell and then you drop your Nord 88 key Nord synthesizer into right, it. Right, right. Uh, so this guy, this company, uh, which I believe is called Piano Shells. You think it's called that? I, I think that's the name of the company. That's interesting. I th- uh, how did you come to that conclusion? Um, I'm not actually 100% sure. It just came to you, huh? Uh, but I think perhaps that is the name of the brand is Piano Shells. Piano Shells, huh? Uh, that's a catchy name. I feel like I'd like to make, hear it over and They again. just make the, the wood parts of the piano. It looks like the cheapest IKEA furniture you could imagine uh, in the shape of a baby grand piano. And then the lid lifts up in the way that a baby grand piano would. And yeah. where the hole would be, like where you would see the soundboard, which I learned from Steve, is the metal frame. Yes. Uh, and all the strings and everything else inside, there is no hole there. It is a flat piece of board on top of where the hole would be. Well, but I think, there, that ba- I think that changes from, mo- from, like, that's an option. Yeah. But there is a gigantic decal print a print, a picture, a, a, pe- a printed picture of the inside of a piano. 
Yeah, so so not every baby grand model has this, but that's the one you're going to see if you check out uh, the link to our Imager album for this. This is awful. It looks terrible. Like I've talked about them before. Before, like when I refinish a guitar, it looks good from about you know three foot foot away, five foot away. Yeah, this you could be fifty feet away and not be fooled by this. This like, looks like it looks really bad. So the problem with this is is what this looks like to me, especially with the shading and everything else going on. Is this looks like somebody went on Getty Images and typed in piano and yeah. like just downloaded the image and then blew it up to this size and stretched it all out stretched. and like their perspective is all weird and there's a weird like fade around it and stuff to make it look like there's just shadow but you can see the the gloss of this photo like of this decal in the photo yeah it, this, you, was, it, this is not going to fool anyone in person this was a stock image that was designed to be like left tiny to put on the yeah on the uh the like left third of a piano teacher's business card i bet that if you saw this thing in person like the pixelation of this this photo decal would be horrendous like i bet it would be just the worst looking thing you've ever seen in your life and you do you agree that like the build of this thing I said Ikea earlier, but it kind of looks like the cheapest, like, like teenage bunk bed you could buy from <laughs> like a discount furniture store. Like, it's, yeah, that, I mean, it's that kind of construction. So I actually saw the original ad, and, and so I saw some of the other ones, and they don't all look this chintzy. Um, but, yeah, but this one some, looks very chintzy. There's some rough ones in here. There's some – I think the ones that – the thing that, is, it doesn't even look like, oh, this is the way the furniture looks. It doesn't even look like, oh, I'm going to make a home for my synth or keyboard here. Right. It looks like three teenagers are going to sit down at this and do their homework. Yeah. Um, I saw some other ones that were, well, I think they do look a lot different with the with the piano or the synthesizer actually loaded into it. I thought their upright and console piano ones looked sure. a lot uh, uh, more like reasonable. An upright makes more sense as a piece of furniture. Like, yeah, like you don't if you're a synth player or a keyboard player and you want to have it set up in your living room in your house, you don't want a bunch of cables and wires and everything. And like your synth sitting on an X shaped stand, like next to all your nice looking furniture. Like, yeah, hide it in an upright style thing. But this baby grand. Thing is a disaster. It's so you have extra room to put your drinks. <laughs> oh man, this is just awful. All right, let's hit this song. Let's get out of here. Um, this song was sent to us by Michael Rigby. Uh, we played as a band back in episode 198, and we're gonna do it again. Here we go. Uh, his band is called The Awkwards. You can check them out on Facebook and whatever. Uh, this song is called Solution. Cool. Okay, bye. Later, guys.